Hello and welcome, and we're playing around with OBS Studio today. It is the 8th day of June, 2021. It is 9 o'clock in the morning, and I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the OGGM, and you can see we have Grumpy Wizard, because I have been asked to relate tales of what is going on at my gaming table, but of course, since I haven't played in over a year, there's nothing going on at my gaming table, so all I can do is turn the Wayback Machine to see what is going on in thy past of gaming. And this time we're going way, way, way back. Back to the 1990s. Uh, you have often heard me reference the TJ Storm 15 year long D&D campaign. Uh, I started playing pretty much when I got out of college met TJ Storm at a gaming convention where he proceeded to kill the character I was playing after about two hours, and that began a, I don't know, 30-year-long friendship, <laughs> however long I've known the guy. Uh, if you're not familiar with who TJ Storm is, he is World Martial Arts Hall of Fame uh, member. Uh, he mo-capped uh, Godzilla in all three Godzilla movies. He mo-capped uh, Colossus. In the Deadpool movies, he was the motion capture for Predator in the new Predator movie. He mocaps Darth Vader in the new Darth Vader Oculus stuff. And he ran a D&D game in Sherman Oaks on and off for 15 years, where every Sunday for 15 years, I pretty much played consistently with a few breaks the same character. This character It's pretty much what the character looks like in my mind now. Uh, the character's name was... Myron Nagadine, or just started as Myron. And why did he start as Myron? Uh, because he had god-awful stats and the party needed a wizard. So, and we're talking second edition Dungeons & Dragons wizard. So that if you ever hear me say old school D&D wizards were hardcore, this is why. Because old school D&D wizards started with a D4 hit points. That means... If they were lucky, they could have four hit points at first level. But since your highest stat pretty much had to be intelligence, you tended to not really focus on the other stats. If you're running a wizard in D&D, you maybe wanted to try and get a high con, but uh, not really. I mean, so I rolled 3d6 the first time I played this character. Um, I've played D&D before this, but I do consider this my first D&D &D character. Uh, that I actually invested time and effort in and played for a long period of time. Um, so my strength was six. Uh, the dex was, I believe, ten or nine. I mean, this guy had crappy stats. Uh, his con was, I think, ten. Uh, his intelligence was 15, which is why I decided to run a wizard. His wisdom was eight and his charisma was 17. Uh, this is before Sorcerers. Remember, this is second edition. So my only choice with those stats was, well, I said, I'm going to run a wizard. I'm going to name him Myron. And he's going to be like a total geek because he's got a high intelligence and everything else kind of sucks. But he's, you know, kind of cute with that high charisma. So you just sort of want to, you know you kind of like him despite the fact that he's sort of winning. So that was how he started in my mind. And they met the characters initially uh, when they were traveling in the TJ's D and D version of the Orient. They had just met a gold dragon named Nagadine, which is where my name comes from. And my character was the dragon's apprentice slash adopted son. Uh, later found out that he was in fact, actually the, the dragon's actual son but that was like years later that tj finally revealed that secret um so of course i had the dragon's name as my last name myron Nagady. so the very first adventure that i'm running this guy this is old school D, &D which means i'm a first level wizard which means i get to start with one spell and then i roll my hit points and i roll the one on the d4 so that means my first level wizard with an armor class of 10 <laughs> In second edition D&D, &D, uh, had one hit point, which means a paper cut could kill me. And I started with one spell. 
And if I remember correctly, we had to roll the spells randomly at first level because, you know, you didn't know what spell you were going to get in your spell book when you left your master. So I rolled randomly, and my first spell was Detect Magic. And this was before cantrips, too. So basically, I'm a first level wizard with one spell, which is Detect Magic, and one hit point, and I'm going with a bunch of adventurers, all of whom were higher level than me. I figured I was going to die. I figured this was a joke character, one shot disposable, which is why he was the name Myron. So we're on the first adventure. We're going through some kind of dungeon. I don't remember why. Uh, there was a dwarf player at the table who was, you know, your typical D&D murder hobo asshole and trying to pick fights with everybody at the table to prove how tough his dwarf was and trying to pick fights with me because I was the new guy and trying to pick fights with every monster. And somehow I got separated from the party. I, it's a long time ago. We're talking 1990, so, and I'm old. I don't remember exactly how I got. I think the dwarf set off a trap and there was like a, you know, a, a stone block that fell down and I was like on one side and the three or four other players were like on the other side. I don't remember. I think it was just, you know, uh, TJ dropped something on the table and I was, I think I was yeah, by, by, by a dice or something. And everybody on one side of the dice was on one side of the wall. And everybody on the other side of the dice was on the other side of the wall. And the way the figures were laid out, of course, I was the wizard. So I was in the back. Bam. So there I am. One hit point. Trapped by myself. Like, you know, 10 gold pieces worth of gear. Because that's all I could cover with my crappy little, um, you know, six strength. Uh, and one hit point trying to find some way to survive, some way to hide, some way to find the rest of the party. How am I going to get this character to live knowing that, like, you know, if the wind changes and knocks me over, I'm dead. And I run into an ogre. So, you know, we're talking, you know, 15, 20, 30 hit point ogre. And my only option is with my detect magic spell is run. So I run as fast as I can. The ogre's chasing me. There's some stairs. I run to the top of the stairs and I'm like, what do I see? What do I see? And there's, because it's a dungeon for some reason, there's like a fountain at the top of the stairs. I guess it's like, I don't, you know, like a drinking fountain. So there's just this little teeny fountain sconce coming out of the wall, magic, you know, water things. And then I was, and I'm just like, what am I going to do? And then I get this bizarre idea in my head and I ask TJ, do I have soap? Because, you know, this is second edition. He really didn't, um, you know, know beyond beginning stuff what your character had. You know, I was like, I had a towel because Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy had just come out. So, you you know, you couldn't go anywhere without your towel. I had a couple things in my backpack, you know, because, uh, but I had a six strength, but it's like, you know, just general standard gear. And I'm like, do I have soap? And he's like, roll a d20. And I rolled, and yes, I have soap. So I come up with this idea that I'm going to plug the fountain so the water starts overflowing, and then I'm going to put the soap on the stairs so t to make it slippery. So if the ogre follows me up the stairs, it's going to slip and fall, and that's going to save my life. Um, and I'm going to hide behind the corner, and I'm going to hit it with something when it comes up the stairs to make it fall down the slippery st stairs. So there I am. I take I plug up the fountain so it doesn't drain with my, you know, shirt. So I'm basically naked. Uh, obviously I have my D and D pants, whatever, but you know, it's, it's overflowing. The water's rolling down the stairs. I'm taking my little D and D soap and smushing it on the steps to make the steps sleepery. Uh, the ogre's chasing after me, you know, TJ's like three, five, oh, I, I turn the corner and it comes up the stairs and I, wait for it to get to the top of the stairs and I whop it with my staff. Natural 20. Natural 20. Okay, so I do my D whatever four minus two damage to it because of my six strength. Do one point of damage. But I'm like, is that enough to make it trip? And he's like, all right, I'll roll. Because I rolled natural 20. So, you know, uh, he's like, yeah, you rolled natural 20. So trips, falls down the stairs. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, that's got to hurt it, you know. And then he's like, well, I got to make the it's saving throw. Uh, and he rolls a one. So my natural 20 and his one and my whole idea and just being that creative and everybody at the table's like, yes, single-handedly take out an ogre, 
falls to the bottom of the steps, breaks its neck, <laughs> instantly get enough experience points to level because I took it out by myself. And I'm like, at that point, wizards are hardcore because my one hit point wizard with one crappy spell that was detect magic managed to take out an ogre with three times my hit points, three times my size, could have killed me if it actually succeeded. Bam, second level. Of course, now I got to go train to get more spells, but I'm like, all right, you know what? Screw this. I just took out an ogre. I'm sticking with this character. And instead of being a geek and a nerd and a loser, I give him like a Napoleon con you know, complex. I'm just like, I'm this teeny little guy and I just took out an ogre. I'm the greatest in the world. And of course, this is the 90s, which means we're talking, you know, early WWE, w, you know, WCW attitude error. So instantly, in my mind, this character, Ric Flair. I'm the greatest in the world. Woo! Styling and profiling. The champion, Myron Nagadine. Woo! And I talked, you know, he was just this total overconfident, completely... I, can t I took out an ogre with one hit point at first level. I can survive anything. Come on. Come at me, bro. I am hardcore. I am freaking hardcore. What you got? I got no armor. I got no weapons. I know one spell. It's detect magic. What you got? Let's go. And that's how I ran the character. I was like, woo-hoo. Always just, you know, he was the little dog going after the big dog. Nothing scared him. I remember one time we're running the character, and I'm a little bit higher level, and there's some, like, giant demon thing you know, and I'm like, um, I run over to the giant demon thing and I grab it by its tail and I cast lightning bolt, hoping that the lightning bolt will travel up its spine and do, you know, shard out its dice or, you know, shard its brain out or whatever. Because I'm this teeny little, you know, human gnome, whatever thing I was. And, you know, I'm still got crappy stats, crappy hit points. Like, and, and TJ was very stingy with magic items. Um, um, and I'm just like, you know, grab this giant reptile Godzilla demon thing by the tail, cast lightning bolt on its tail, hoping that the lightning bolt will travel up its spine and short it out. And I roll like max damage. <laughs> that was just the, the stupid dumb luck this character had. I mean, even when he died, he, he went out in a blaze of glory, man. And then I managed to find a way to keep myself semi alive, even though I'm, I was dead because my soul got trapped in a thing, which is when I found out that uh, um, my character was actually half dragon. And, you know, he had this um, um, soul jar spell cast on him by his dad to keep him alive. So his um, spirit was trapped in his eye, which wasn't a real eye. It was actually a gem. We found out this whole time the dragon had been watching us through my eye, but not helping us. And, you know, so my soul was trapped in this eye for like a, ye a year, two years maybe, before I found a way to bring the character back. And, of course, the, you know, the, and the jackass at the time in the party was keeping my eye and like tormenting me that I was still in your eye and all the, and I'm playing like a different character and all the while I'm trying to figure out ways to bring this back. And, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm saving up my birthday twenties. I'm saving every time he's like, Oh, you guys get this. And this is like, I'm, I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that. I'm going to find a way to bring Myron back. The character is just too hardcore to die. He is just too too stubborn to die. He is too grumpy to die. And I finally find a way to get him reincarnated, but he gets reincarnated as a kobold. <laughs> so he's running around at the kobold. And because I'm reincarnated, every spell I knew is lost and I don't have a spell book. So I get to know one spell, but now cantrips are around. So the spell I know is basically a version of prestidigitation, which lets me create a tomato and throw it at guys, people called Honing's Tomato. It was a spell teenage TJ made up. So there I am running around this kobold throwing tomatoes at people until I can get my hands on actual magic and actual spells. And I lasted as a kobold for a couple sessions, but then I got killed. <laughs> and then he came back again as a gnome. Uh, and then, of course, I moved up here to... Ventura, so I didn't really get to play the character again for a while, but he was always in the back of my head. 
and he would come out every now and then for like special one shots uh some you know for like one game uh, my friend ran a birthday game and i was like can i play this character so i you know brought him up to uh converted him to the system we were using at the time which i believe was pathfinder and you know in pathfinder since he was half dragon he was a dragonborn sorcerer really and i was like yeah you know so but still he's just a scrawny little guy with you know, crappy stats, but an outrageous, you know, outrageous charisma who just manages to get by sheer stubbornness, sheer grumpiness, sheer audacity and dumb luck, you know, <laughs> it's like, and just trying to come up with unique ways to use the limited resources at his disposal, at my disposal. It was probably one of my all time favorite characters, Myron Nagadine. So there you go. There's a story. Uh, from my days of playing and why I say wizards of Har- wizards in the old d d with their D4 hit points were hardcore. Myron is also, of course, where the Fireball the Party They Like It theme comes up. And what I what is now referred to as uh, Nagadine's Theorem. Nagadine's Theorem is that the amount of damage your spells do is directly proportional to the amount of friendly people in the radius of the spell. Because, you know, he was always casting fireball and lightning bolt and damage spells. It was always like people were in the radius. And if people were in the radius, it would do more damage. But if like nobody was in the radius, like with my lightning bolts or my single target spells, it would do like no damage or the least amount of damage. But if there was friendlies in the radius, max damage, (laughs) double damage, ridiculous damage. Because, you know, I'd take out friendlies as much as I would take out opponents and they would get mad at me. And I was like... Why were you standing there? I told you I was going to cast Fireball. I was never that wizard that said I'm going to cast Fireball and not tell my party. I'm like, no, I'm casting Fireball. So get out of the way. And they never did because of initiative. (laughs) And then they're mad at me. I was like, I told you to get out of the way. It's not my fault. You didn't move. What you thought you were going to survive it because you're Mr. High Level Ranger. But every time there was a party member in the radius, I did more damage. So that eventually became Nagadine's Theorem. Uh, the amount of damage your spells do is directly proportional to the amount of party members are in the radius. So there you go. Some D&D stories from my past. If you appreciate this content, let me know and we will keep doing this. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Help me hit 500 subs by August 4th. I'm going to leave you here because I've got a phone interview coming up. Till next time, stay classy, stay adventurous, advocate for yourself, never give up. Never surrender to infinity beyond beyond. Get off my lawn.